Hey you two, this is Primetime Pokemon. In this video, I'll be reviewing my Buzzwool GX and Lycanroc GX deck. Now this is the third competitive deck that I've reviewed on my channel. Definitely take a look at the previous two that I've done. The first one was based around Alola Ninetales GX and Zoroark GX. And then the second one was based around Gardevoir GX and then Sylveon GX. Now out of the three, I actually think this one is my favorite. And the reason for that would be that this deck is very quick to set up. And because of that, it can win a battle very quickly. Now this is a majority fighting type deck, so it is weak to grass and psychic type Pokemon, which is a bit of an issue, but for the most part, really do like this deck. And I've battled about 75 times with this deck on the online game. And you can always add me on there, primetime Pokemon. You can add me and then potentially battle with me on the online game. I know I've battled with a few of my subscribers on there already. But really, the strategy with this deck is to get your bench Pokemon set up, and I have four Max Elixir in this deck, and then, then use Guzma and then Lycanroc GX's ability to get the defending Pokemon to be a Pokemon you want that you either can knock out in one move or is not set up at all, so you can attack it several times before your opponent can do anything with that Pokemon. So a very powerful deck overall. Two powerful GX moves on Lycanroc and Buzzwool can really knock out any Pokemon in one attack. And then also a lot of the Pokemon here can do at least 100 damage. But the thing there, they do require two or three energy cards each. So that's why there are Max Elixir. And then I also use Regirock and then a lot of strong energy to increase the amount of damage when attacking. Ideally with this deck, you want to get Buzzwool in the active Pokemon spot to start the game, spread damage around, and then you can bring in a big hitter like a Lycanroc, a Regirock, or a Zygarde, and then you can do 100 plus damage, and if a Pokemon already has, let's say, 30 damage on it, it makes it that much easier to knock out. But as like my other videos, and I have done two, like I mentioned, I will go through each and every card now and state the reason for the card being in this deck and then state the strategy for that card. But first up, as you'll see on the screen, is a deck checklist. And if you do have any future suggestions for me on decks you'd like to see, please let me know. Okay, so now I'll show every card in detail and state why these cards are in my deck. I'll start with the Pokemon first, 16 total Pokemon in this deck. Started off with Buzzwool GX. This is from the Crimson Invasion set. I have three Buzzwool GX in the deck. I'll only show one of each card just to simplify things a little bit. Very good HP for a basic GX of 190. And then all three moves on this card are very good. Jet Punch does 30 damage for one Fighting Energy card, plus it does 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Ideally, to start the game, you would get Buzzwool GX in the active Pokemon spot, put a strong energy on it, and then get Regirock EX on the bench, therefore doing 60 damage to the defending Pokemon, plus 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And 30 damage times two, if you use this move twice, will knock out a lot of bench Pokemon that are basic, that are looking to evolve, like a Remoraid, like an Alolan Vulpix, etc. And then Knuckle Impact is the next move on this card, a very powerful move for three energy cards. It does 160 damage. Now if you attach two strong energy to this card, that will make it do 200 damage per turn, which is quite a bit and will knock out a lot of Pokemon in one turn. Unfortunately, this move can only be used once because it makes this Pokemon unable to attack during its next turn. The way that you get around this is you use Guzma to retreat this card to your bench. You put something that has a Floatstone Trainer attached to it and then you just retreat that card in the active Pokemon spot and put this Buzzwool GX back in the active Pokemon spot and then you can use Knuckle Impact every single turn. And then early in the game, this GX move, Absorption GX, is very good. It does 40 damage times the amount of prize cards you have left. So early in the game, this move would do 240 damage, which would knock out almost all Pokemon cards out there that don't have something else attached to it, increasing their HP. So this is the GX move that I look to use early. Lycanroc GX has a GX move that I use later in games. 
So three Buzzwool GX, next up would be a 2-2 line of Rockruff and Lycanroc GX. The Rockruff that I use is a Black Star promo SM06. I believe it is from the One Pack Blisters of Sun and Moon Bay set. And I usually don't try and get this card in the active Pokemon spot, but I do put this card on the bench and I use Max Elixir to attach energy to it. Of course, Max Elixir only allows energy to be attached to basic Pokemon, so you can evolve it into Lycanroc and then have that card work. And if this card is in the active Pokemon spot, at least it does have two moves that both do damage when attacking. And then I do have two Lycanroc GX in this deck. This is from the Guardians Rising set. And the main reason I have Lycanroc GX is because of its ability. It says when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon. Like I talked about in the open, of this video this deck is really set up so that you switch whatever pokemon you want of your opponents into the active pokemon spot this is one of the ways that that is accomplished you can just keep rock rough on the bench evolve it into lichen rock gx and then really put whatever card you want in the active pokemon spot of your opponents and then knock that pokemon out or you may want to move something in the active pokemon spot that isn't set up and therefore can attack right away or even retreat other than that, Claw Slash does 110 damage for 3 energy cards, not a bad move. And then Dangerous Rogue GX is the other GX move I was talking about. For only 2 energy cards, this does 50 damage times the number of bench Pokemon your opponent may have. So it can do up to 250 damage. So like I said, later in games when the opponent may have a full bench, I try and use this GX. If I can knock out a GX or EX card early with Absorption GX on Buzzwall, then I'll use that. Otherwise, I'll wait and use Dangerous Rogue GX. So two very powerful GX cards on the GX cards in this deck. Next up, I have one Regirock EX. This is from the Fates Collide set. You can also get this card in alternate artwork form in the Mega Powers collection box. Same goes for Zygarde EX. I only use one Regirock EX mainly for its ability. It says the attacks of your fighting type Pokemon do 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So I use the Brooklet Hill Stadium card to get this card on the bench right away. Therefore, I always have more damage when attacking. Always 10 additional damage and then you also add the strong energy. That's 30 damage at a minimum right there. And then Bedrock Press for 3 fighting energy cards is 100 damage. And it says during your opponent's next turn any damage done to this Pokemon by attacks is reduced by 20. So that is helpful. Only 180 HP on this card. A little bit lower than the 2 GX cards I've shown so far. But ideally you only want to keep this card on your bench. Attach a Floatstone Trainer card to this card so that if you do get this card switched to the active Pokemon spot, you can just retreat it right away. And then I have one Zygarde EX and have a lot of powerful Pokemon in this deck. The disadvantage that I've found is that if I'm facing anything like Alolan Ninetales, I believe there's a Hoopa out there that prevent damage from EX or GX cards and really sunk. Ideally, you want to use Guzma to get those Pokemon out of the active Pokemon spot, but if you're not able to, or if only those Pokemon are in play, you're really sunk, you could try to attack with Rockruff, which doesn't do much. I do have Octillery in this deck, but I do not have any Water-type energy, so that's really the disadvantage. Of course, these Pokemon are weak to Grass and Psychic-type Pokemon, two very popular types of Pokemon right now, so there's definitely some disadvantages to this deck. But this deck is one of the best decks out there for beating your opponent very quickly. So Zygarde EX, three great moves on it. And that's really something I like, a basic Pokemon that can attack the first turn. Lands Pulse is the first move. It says, if there is any Stadium card in play, this attack does 20 more damage. So for one Fighting Energy card, this move could do 70 damage if you have a Brooklet Hill Stadium in play, if you have Regirock EX on the bench, and then you have a Strong Energy attached to this card. So 70 damage for one Energy card, very good. Cell Storm for two Energy cards does 60 damage, plus it heals 30 damage from this Pokemon. That makes its HP of 190 seem even higher. And then Lands Wrath does 100 damage for 3 energy cards. Very similar to both Lycanroc GX and Regirock. 
Ideally, you want to use Knuckle Impact from Buzzwell GX every turn, but if that isn't possible, there are a couple other cards in this deck that can do at least 100 damage for three energy cards. So that is really it for the attackers. Now, of course, I have Tapu Lele GX in this deck. I actually have three Tapu Lele, and again, the reason I have three as opposed to two that you see in a lot of decks is because I'm always trying to get Guzma into my hand, therefore getting exactly the Pokemon I want in the defending Pokemon spot. So Tapu Lele GX, of course, very popular, 170 HP, which is a little bit low, but you're going to mainly use this card on your bench and utilize its Wonder Tag ability. It says, when you play this Pokemon from your hand on your bench, during your turn you may search your deck for a supporter card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your deck. A lot of times you'll see Tapu Lele being used to start the game and then searching for a Bridget Trainer to get three basic Pokemon on your bench. I do not have a Bridget Trainer in this deck, mainly because I have so many basic Pokemon in this deck and I can use Brooklet Hill to get those cards on the bench. And I also can use Anne or Professor Sycamore with Tapu Lele to get Pokemon into my hand and put those on the bench. And then Energy Drive, it'd be nice if I had double colorless energy in this deck to use. Energy Drive, 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. And then of course I can't use its GX move because I only have Fighting and then Strong Energy in this deck. Now of the three competitive decks that I've reviewed on my channel, this is the first to include the Remoraid Octillery line. I decided to use this line as opposed to using Orangaroo to draw cards, mainly because of Brooklet Hill and that I can get Remoraid onto the bench with that card and then I can use something like an Ultra Ball to search for the Octillery. This Remoraid is from the Breakthrough set. I like that if you are forced to put this card into the active Pokemon spot, you can at least get it out right away with Wild River. So this is from the Breakthrough set. I use a 2-2 line of Remoraid on Octillery. And then Octillery, pretty much a staple in a lot of decks out there. This is easily the best way to draw cards. Its Abyssal Hand ability says, once during your turn, you may draw cards until you have five cards in your hand. Orangaroo does essentially the same thing, except for that draws cards until you have three cards in your hand. Of course, it just takes a little bit longer to set up this card. I have two of each. That way, if I do get this card set up and it gets knocked out, I can replace that line. Or if I do have this line set up on the bench, I can use Remoraid and Octillery as cards to discard with Ultra Ball. And this is from the Breakthrough set as well. And then it's one move hug I can't use because it requires water type energy. But really, Abyssal Hand is the main reason that I would use both Octillery, its ability on this card, and Tapu Lele, the ability there. So that's really it for Pokemon 16 total. Some powerful hitters. It does take a little bit of time to get some of these cards set up. But with Max Elixir and most of these Pokemon being basic Pokemon, you can set them up pretty quickly. So now on to the trainer cards in this deck, and I would say trainer cards are the most important type of Pokemon card in the competitive TCG today. They give your deck really a strategy and a direction. They help get your deck set up very quickly. Of those 31 trainer cards, I have 13 supporters. Pretty standard stuff here. First up, I have four Guzma, and that may be one more than you're used to seeing. The reason I use four as opposed to three is because the strategy behind this deck is really to get the defending Pokemon to be something that you want, that you can either knock out right away, or that is not set up at all, that will flounder in that active Pokemon spot. I use this in combination with Tapu Lele to really get the Pokemon I want in the defending Pokemon spot. So for Guzma, this is from the Burning Shadow set. I use one Acerola, and the reason that this card is in my deck is because a lot of the Pokemon in this deck do have a high HP. So a lot of times, Pokemon will only be able to do 150, 160, 170 damage when attacking, leaving 10, 20, 30 damage remaining to knock out one of my Pokemon. I'll use Acerola and heal all damage from that Pokemon, putting it back into my hand. A lot of basic Pokemon in my deck, so I can then put that Pokemon right back on the bench and reattach an energy card to that Pokemon. In Buzzwool's case, if I'm just using Jet Punch, have a strong energy on it, I can use Acerola, 
retrieve all of those cards back into my hand and then put down Buzzwall and the Strong Energy right away. If I have a Floatstone Trainer attached to the Pokemon I put in the active Pokemon spot, retreat that and then I can get Buzzwall damage free back in the active Pokemon spot. Just one Ace Roll again, use Tapu Lele to get to this. And then I have four Professor Sycamore, pretty standard breakpoint set here. The Ace Roll is from Burning Shadows. Discard your hand and draw seven cards. This card is better to use later in games when you may only have one or two prize cards left and won't do very good for you because it will not give you many cards in your hand. So that is the time to use Professor Sycamore. And then I used four, and this is from the Fates Collide set. Each player shuffles his or her hand into his or her deck. Then each player draws a card for each of his or her remaining prize cards. So earlier in a game when you have all the prize cards remaining would be a better time to use this supporter. Also, if you know your opponent just drew cards that they wanted, if they're using something like Magical Ribbon on Sylveon GX and anything like that where they're potentially going into their deck and grabbing cards that they like, use N to have those Pokemon cards shuffled back into their deck. So that is it for the supporter cards. I have 18 item and stadium type cards here to show. First up would be Choice Band. This is from Guardians Rising. I used two Choice Band Trainer cards. You attach this to a Pokemon and it does 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon or active Pokemon EX. Of course, the competitive TCG right now full of GX and EX cards. Really very popular out there. I use this quite a bit. So two Choice Band Trainer cards. And this really does quite a bit when attacking something like a Gardevoir GX. I believe that card has 230 HP. So something like a Knuckle Impact on Buzzwool GX only does 160 damage. You add 30 damage to that, does 190 damage. Have one of those cards be a Strong Energy, that's 210. And then have something like Regirock on your bench, that's 220. So that really makes a difference, that 30 additional damage with Choice Band. Next up would be Max Elixir, and this is a way to get your basic Pokemon set up very quickly. And it says, look at the top six cards in your deck and attach a basic energy card you find there to a basic Pokemon on your bench. And this is from the Breakpoint set as well. These cards are actually very expensive per card. Didn't want to take the time, the hours probably, to search through all my cards to try and find these. These are about $6 a piece online. But you ideally just attach these to your bench Pokemon play this card and attach the fighting energy. I have several fighting energy cards in this deck, so Max Elixir works well. Like I mentioned with Rockruff, you definitely want to save Lycanroc GX until you have used plenty of Max Elixir. You can use two Max Elixir in the same turn, get those two energy on Rockruff, then evolve it into Lycanroc GX, and then use this dangerous Rogue GX move all in that same turn. And those cards really help your deck get set up very quickly. And then I have four Ultra Ball. This is just used to get a Pokemon you want into your hand. You have to discard two cards from your hand first. And then you search your deck for Pokemon Reveal and put it into your hand. You use this to get to, for example, Tapu Lele. You may want to use it to get to Octillery, Lycanroc GX. And with this, I found that it's better to discard Pokemon because you can use Rescue Stretcher to get those Pokemon back into either your deck or your hand. Float Stone, which is very important, especially with the powerful Pokemon in this deck and a lot of high retreat costs on the cards in this deck. I have two Float Stone. Field Blower, very popular out there, so more than likely they're going to get cleared from the field of play. Fighting Fury Belt, I just have one of. Now this is also from the Breakpoint set and you have to attach this to a basic Pokemon card. This basic Pokemon that this card is attached to does 10 more damage when attacking and has 40 more HP. So the already high HP on a lot of the GX and EX cards in this deck become even higher. And then another way to increase the amount of damage when attacking. This card can only be used on Buzzwool, Regirock, and Zygarde. Of course, Lycanroc, a Stage 1. Artillery, you wouldn't use that anyway. So only very limited, that's why I only have one. But just having that a little bit higher HP makes a big difference as well. That's why I include both Fighting Fury Belt and Acerola in my deck. Rescue Stretcher, I just have one of. This is from Guardians Rising. It allows you to do two things. One of two things. Put a Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand or shuffle three Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck. 
And like with the Ultra Ball that I was talking about, you can discard a specific Pokemon you want to get right back, and then play Rescue Stretcher and put that card right back into your hand. Or later in games, if you do not have many cards left in your deck, you can add three cards to your deck by using the second option on this card. And then Field Blower, this is from Guardians Rising as well, just one of this card. Choose up to two in any combination of Pokemon Tool cards and Stadium cards in play and discard them. You see a lot of Choice Band trainer cards out there. That's a good way to discard of those. Same goes for Floatstone. And then the final type of item or Stadium card would be Brooklet Hill. This is really essential to this deck to getting it set up quite quickly. And the reason that I do not have a Bridget trainer card in this deck, it says... Once during each player's turn, that player may search their deck for a basic water Pokemon or basic fighting Pokemon, put it onto their bench, and shuffle their deck. I have three Brooklet Hill Stadium cards in this deck, and that's another reason that I use the Remoraid Octillery line because of this Brooklet Hill Stadium card. But I use Brooklet Hill all the time to get out Regirock EX and do 10 more damage when attacking with my active Pokemon. Also a good way to get Boswell GX on your bench to start the game and then rotate it into the active Pokemon spot. So that is it for the trainer cards, 31 total like I said. And then as far as energy cards go, I have 13 total. I have four strong energy and it says this card can only be attached to fighting type Pokemon. This card provides fighting energy only while this card is attached to a fighting type Pokemon. The attacks of the fighting Pokemon this card is attached to do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So a great way to increase the already powerful cards in this deck. So I have four of this card, and this is from Fates Collide. And then I have nine fighting type energy. So 13 total energy cards. So there you have it. Like I said, I've had a lot of success with this deck on the online game, Primetime Pokemon, my name on there. But a way to knock out your opponent very quickly. This deck does a lot of damage. And if you can get Max Elixir into your hand early, you can get all these Pokemon set up very quickly and do a ton of damage no matter what Pokemon you have in the active Pokemon spot. Disadvantages like I was talking about. The Pokemon here are weak to Grass and Psychic. There is a mixture of both, so that way if you are facing a majority of Grass or a majority of Psychic type Pokemon deck, you can use either or type of card. You can use Lycanroc if you're facing a Psychic type deck, or you can use Buzzwool if you are facing a Grass type deck. But overall, a very good deck. If you have any suggestions for me on decks you'd like me to build and review in the future, or if you have modifications to this deck, that you think I should implement, please let me know. But there you have it. Thanks everyone for watching. As always, before you go, check out all the links in the description of this video, including links to my blog, Facebook, and Twitter pages. And stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.